Okay, so Janet had a, a good question earlier related to Facebook. Um, and as you remember, last week, if you were here, we started setting up our custom audiences. And uh, with the custom audiences, it's, it's important when we do the detailed interests, when we're adding those in, that you understand that at some point, let's say we had six different detailed interests that we added in. Maybe one was Zillow, one was um, house hunting, and so on, for a total of six. Now we entered a lot more for some of them and, and less for some. What you might assume is that everybody in that list needs to meet all six criteria, but that's not actually what happens, okay? Facebook will serve out maybe 10% of your ad traffic to those that like Zillow or have visited Zillow. They might also serve out another 10% to those that are house hunting. So what Janet did was she had just put in the word freehold. So now Facebook might be tracking anybody that's been interested or visited anything related to freehold but not necessarily all of this. So at that point, it's kind of wasted traffic because just because their freehold interest doesn't mean that they had Zillow and house hunting and all of that. So in our detailed interest, we kind of want to stay in the housing space. However, if you wanted to include the word freehold, there's another section. Remember how we excluded realtors? from our audiences, right beside that link, there's another link that says narrow. And what happens is it will take all of these interests or all of them individually, and it will also narrow to freehold. So basically think of it in math terms, that if, if Facebook is serving out to a Zillow audience, it might be Zillow plus freehold equals leads. Okay? So, so if you put it in, in what you said, the narrow? Right. So if you click narrow, and it's very descriptive. When you click the word narrow there, Facebook says something to the effect of must also match this. Now what you'll see is all of this audience right here might be around 10,000. If you narrow to just freehold, it might go to like 500. And what do we remember? Who remembers whether 500 is good or bad for an interest? Bad. Bad. bad, very bad. Okay? We want the most number of people in our audiences as possible that still maintain the interest in what you're going after. Don't think that, oh yeah, I can get it down to 250. I think Facebook actually only shows now 1,000 and it'll say a uh, number's unavailable because it's under 1,000. But let's say you could go to 250, you'd say, oh, I'm hyper-targeting just to 250 people. Doesn't work like that, okay? Facebook will basically say, I have no idea what to do with this ad, so I'm just not even gonna show it, all right? They wanna see the most number of people possible. Now, when I'm going after particular cities, like Colts Neck, for instance, there's only going to be about 7,000 people in all of Colts Neck. So how are you supposed to reach 10,000? Well, you can't. But if Facebook will understand, in the targeting, I want to reach everybody in Colts Neck, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay? So that's the key. Don't think that in layering these, that it's going to be all-encompassing because it's kind of an either or until you do a narrow. Yes? Grant, what would be like the optimal time range and amount of money to, to spend to hit that 10,000? So, um, well, to reach all 10,000, you'd be several hundred dollars on a campaign, probably more than 100 a day. So um, some of the campaigns that I run for clients that spend 2,500 to 3,000 a month, um, you know, they're reaching maybe 12% of a total audience like this. But it also depends, and this is in video too, if you do an engagement ad, which is not lead-based, you're going to reach here probably more like 27% of those people. 
if you run a lead ad campaign, you're going to reach probably more like 5% of these people because your budget doesn't go as far. Because the difference is, is Facebook and a lead ad is saying, I'm going to try and get you name, phone number, and email. That costs more. In an engagement ad where there's no leads associated to it, it's just spraying it out there in, amongst your audience for the most exposure. So. so engagement is branding. Yeah, perfect. Yep. And your expectations on an engagement ad would be 0% lead. You should, you should feel lucky if you actually get a text or a phone call from an engagement ad. And that's exactly why I say that because you can walk into a 7-Eleven you know, and buy $1,000 worth of lottery tickets and get zero. The guy that comes after you might buy one ticket and win a million dollars. That's luck. Okay, that's the same thing with Facebook, is that if you're going to get anything from an engagement ad that's lead-based, you're going to be lucky. Don't think that you've got a killer ad. Assume that, oh, I just got lucky. I won the lottery. Okay? Whereas with a lead ad, it's different. Okay? Your whole basis for a lead ad is I want name, email, and phone number, and Facebook's going to supply those to me. So, yes. Uh, Brett, my friend told me that building your Facebook audience page is just as important as boosting these out. Nope. Really? In real estate, not even close. Because here's the thing. No one ever goes to your page. Nobody. Okay? So the number of likes you have on a page does not at all contribute to the number of people it gets sent out to. Because organically, you could have a thousand likes on your page and you could do an open house post and it would only reach about 10 people. So there's no value in stockpiling likes at all. I have one page um, just listed, Mammoth, where we feature um, listings for people through our concierge service. I have three likes on that page, but we, we definitely get at least two to 300 leads a month from that page. Because people are getting info <coughs> from it, they're just not liking it. They're yeah. not necessarily hitting like. No one, but they're, it, but they're not necessarily you know, liking like a, you don't like an ad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't necessarily like an ad because the ad has, um, a has a reason to it, yes. So an engagement ad, you might comment, like, or share. That's what Facebook charges you for. Whereas on a lead ad, <coughs> Facebook only charges you based on when leads actually physically come into your system. So, so having 10,000 people that have liked your page in real estate, that's nice. You can always say that it, it looks good, but in the end, it's not going to help you. So, yeah, that's a Now, I'll say this though, in the pizza space, because I, I still have a client that has a pizza restaurant, totally different for him. When he posts a special and it gets out there organically, he has people constantly going to his page, like day after day, looking for the daily special. At that point, by all means. But in real estate, it's just not that way. Mm -hmm. Okay? It'd be like if there was, how many agents do we have now? Like 1,100 in, in KW? It'd be like if there was 1,100 pizza stores from within the same jurisdiction that we have here. Be ridiculous. Their, their pages would have almost zero value at that point, too. What does it mean when it says that your page has a new preview? Oh, that's some, um, the templates are changing for the Facebook pages, so they're rolling it out incre incrementally. So um, if you go to your Facebook business page, it might look different than it did a month ago. But in your, no, like in your notifications, I'll say like your real estate pages had one new like and one view and one preview. Yeah, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about the preview. Okay. So maybe it has to do with somebody that popped it open in mobile, I'm not quite sure. I can find out though. Facebook rolls so many new things out on a, a weekly basis. Like it's, it's dizzying for me, believe me. <laughs> so, yes. So just to confirm, what you're saying is actual organic content on your business page really is almost unnecessary. The key is have a page and then push out. Advertise from that page. Yep. Yeah. Again, three, four years ago, organic content on Facebook pages was great. You know, for a hundred people, your organic content may have been 20%, but now it's more like 1% to 2%. And if that 1% to 2% hasn't engaged with it in the first hour, Facebook basically says, ah, no value here, shut it off. Really? Yep. That's why a lot of people 
a lot of agents say, oh, well, I post on Facebook all the time and it doesn't work. Well, what doesn't work is, is that you're not paying money in order to distribute the content you're posting. It, Facebook is 100% pay to play now. Say that again, sorry. So if you're not, basically what it all boils down to is, if you're not paying to distribute your content, it's going nowhere. They're ignoring it. Yep. It, Facebook has come out numerous times and said our Facebook feed is sold out. So if your content isn't interesting to the people it's distributed to for free, they shut it down because they've got ads they need to put in, they've got 10 other um, Facebook pages they need to get in. Basically, Facebook has said, listen, if it's boring, if it's not getting comments, likes, and shares immediately, it's out. It's not email marketing where you press the button and you, it's going to go to all 100 people. Is that just business pages or is that your personal page as well? Personal pages are a little different. Because, but if you notice on a personal page, you always see the same content from the same people. Right. The same 25 people or so that you're friends with, that you interact with the most, is the content you see. If you get bored of those people, then what you need to do is interact with another 25 people, and then all of a sudden the old 25 will drop off. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so if, yeah, if you don't like somebody anymore in your Facebook feed, just interact with a bunch of other people. Quickest route to that, too, is to actually physically message somebody, which you can do in your sphere, right? Send them a PM, say, hey, I was just thinking about you today. Maybe let's meet for coffee. Then all of a sudden, you're going to start seeing every post they put out for the next week. Oh, wow. Yep. And will they see yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's because it's mutually. And if you go to their page, well, is that like a way to engage too? Like go to their profile? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Any action you take with a direct user will kind of sway the algorithm to start to include those. But that's personal, that's not? Personal and business too, possibly personal. business, but again, because, it, put it this way, in prime time on Facebook, one in every five posts is a sponsored ad. Okay. So if you're going to a business page and they don't have a sponsored ad, it's unlikely that it's going to hit your news feed because they, they have limited space for business and related content. And here's the thing. Facebook said this back in, um, you, if you watched the video from uh, last October or November, Facebook's interest in organic content is that if it creates a genuine or meaningful conversation between two individuals, then it gets advanced. Then it grows. Then it grows. If it doesn't create a meaningful conversation between at least two individuals, then it dies. Now, what it can't be is a meaningful conversation be between you and your mom or you and your sister because Facebook algorithm will pick that up so you can't game the system either. If it's you and somebody else that's always conversing about that, then it dies quickly too. It needs to create multiple conversations. And the longer the posts are, the comments from within that organic thread, the more Facebook will feed it out. So if you're commenting on something, you're helping that person yep. be in the forefront. Of right. Facebook. On their business. In their business post. Not not in their personal. I mean in their personal, yes, too. Because it's creating interaction. But yeah. Okay. That's that. Is that the same for Instagram? Instagram's a little different because everything is so tight and small. But because it's based on the same algorithm, the Facebook platform, it, it probably has something to do with that, yes. So... Yeah, good question so far, by the way. Is it the same, like, when you're scrolling down and you see, like, the Starbucks ad? Yes. Is this, like, the same thing, like, they paid for that? Yes, uh, they've paid for that ad. Do you go to Starbucks? Uh, not usually. Yeah? No? Okay. So, typically, what would happen is Starbucks... Well, like this is the same idea, right? Same thing. Same. Starbucks actually has what they call beacons inside of their stores that will tag you as being at a Starbucks and then you'll start to see their ads hmm. in their... Um, it's the same idea, basically. Yeah, same thing. How do they tag you? It's through a mobile connection. <coughs> if you have location services turned on in your, um, in your phones... So if I walk into a Starbucks with my phone, but I'm not using my tag. phone, it'll still tag me? Yeah, so long as it's turned on. <laughs> yep. I got a problem with that. <laughs> right. So watch where you hang out, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs>
If you turn location off, typically it does not show up. Because the location services is how they're tagging your, your um, goings back right. and forth. Yeah. yeah. That's also how Facebook knows where you live. <laughs> Great. Because they know between certain hours of the day that you're sleeping, hypothetically, in one address. Do they know when you go into the bathroom? See? Oh, they're back there going, oh, Carol's in the bathroom again. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, don't be scared because there's nothing you can do about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It is what so. Big so you're not doing anything wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is there value in live Multitask. videos then? Yes. Unless you're not boosting. So, we're actually going to talk about video today, so let me get back to you on that one. Because David asked, is there value in live videos? And yes. But you need to rework how you do the live video. That's how I would say. Getting off Facebook following you, can sure. I ask a question about an ad when link clicks? Where do those links go when they click on there? Right. So if you do a link click ad, it typically ends up going to a landing page, or in our case, it would go to a property page or, or something like that. So Some way to procure um, connect uh, contact information. So will you show us how, to, how and where to link that? Because yes. I did an ad with a link click and I don't think I ah. went to tell you anything. Okay. Um, you would have to because you can't even save it without entering a link in. Okay. Like Facebook won't even publish it unless it's a link. Okay, so so no but it's going but there's some link clicks going and watching it. Okay. So. All right, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do that. Okay. Um, week five, we get totally right into setting up ads click by click, okay. and um, we'll take the lead-based ad, the click ads, and the engagement ads. We'll set them up one by one, and, and we'll literally go through. Everybody will have to go through it and actually launch one. Okay. Um, you can turn it off immediately if you're dead broke, so, um, but that's, that's okay. At least you'll know how. And at that point, once you've created the ad and it's been launched and you turn it off, you can always turn it on and off again at any point. So I did this last night. It has 35 link clicks. Yep. 7,500 impressions so far. Yep. Nice. So it must be a pretty good ad. Not bad. Yep. And what's your cost per click? It'll be... Um, uh, so far, per link click is $1.98. Not bad. Nice. Yep. We typically like to see, in, in my agency, we typically like to see somewhere between $75 and $1.25 a click. But it's a so. lead, it's, it's supposed to be generating leads, and I'm not getting any. If it's a link click, it's probably not. You would have to have set it up as a lead generation ad. Now, it, if it, did you fill out a lead form? Lead generation. You, you, you created the lead form, yeah. but you haven't had any come in? All right, let me look at it at the end because okay. Facebook doesn't automatically alert you when lead ads. We have two of them going. I did one right. for an open house which actually generated 48 link clicks at 15 cents a click. Perfect. That's more of what we want to do. Our good engagement ads, which would be um, for open houses, we like to see um, engagements at somewhere between four cents and six cents a piece. So. Um, and it's typically messaging. That's all it is. And multiple pictures. Multiple pictures are essential. So, yes. And would you say to use like a Facebook form for the lead form? Or is there, or do you recommend a landing page where they're going and then there's more content? What's it, it just depends. Lead forms are a little bit more expensive, but you do get verified content from them, assuming that Facebook you know, when they signed up for their Facebook profile, it automatically fills that form. So lead forms, though, can be anywhere from a dollar fifty to like seven dollars a lead, and some people might not respond to you. So um, we'll get into that in week five because lead ads is one of the things that I do recommend for very specific things like coming soon and just listed ads. Um, for things like open houses and stuff like that, I don't recommend it because no one ever pre-signs up to go to an open house. You know. So, okay, so let's move into video. Great questions so far. And I don't mind taking a bunch of time to, to talk about that. Today is actually one of the best days because we typically end a little bit early uh, in session three. So, okay, video. Everyone always asks me what the perfect length of a video is. I'm going to confuse you right away. The perfect length of the video has two different meanings, and here's why. On Facebook, people watch video for entertainment value. When they find something on YouTube or YouTube uh, via Google, 
Tell me why someone would find your video on Google. Instructions. Instructions, right? They went to Google, they typed in Home Values Middletown, New Jersey. Okay? They're seeking a reason on Google to answer a question or to get instructions. Okay? So what happens is with YouTube and Google, YouTube likes videos to be at least two minutes long, somewhere between two and three minutes if you're giving educational type content. If it's entertainment type content, then it's somewhere between a minute and two minutes. Now, how many of you have been or have gone through Facebook and clicked a video before? How many of you clicked off of that video probably within 30 seconds? Why? Because you're here for entertainment on Facebook. You're not looking for an answer. Vastly different. So, on Facebook, I recommend 45 seconds up to a minute if the content is good. Now, as you're going to learn today, it doesn't require that you're physically on the video. I'm, I'm going to show you, <laughs> I'm going to show you a tool I just started using and um, you, it's going to blow your socks off. You're going to love it. Okay. It is a paid tool that you have to subscribe to. However, um, if you're broke, you can um, ask me kindly to help and I will. <laughs> okay. So. Everybody understand the two different uses? Very important to understand. People will be entertained on Facebook, so we need to keep our videos content lower in, in uh, time span. On YouTube, they're going there for an answer. And the number one search network is um, Google, obviously. Number, the second most searched site is YouTube. That's why Google acquired YouTube a long time ago, because they saw that YouTube, as far as searches go, would definitely outpace Bing and whatever is left. I sometimes use Yahoo and Bing for um, searches, and their stuff is just, it, it doesn't give you accurate results. Bing still exists? Yeah, see? <laughs> I don't know, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> this shows you how often I use it. But in the end, you have to understand the, the two differences. Facebook, entertainment, so keep it short. YouTube, a little bit longer, maybe a little bit more thorough because people are looking for an answer. Very key fact. Now the YouTube, Google, you're saying two to three minutes. Would, would that be like a, a tour of a home? It could be a tour of a home. Or, or yep. you said people searching for homes in Middletown. Would you then... You could compile them. I'm going to get into okay. that. I'll, I'll tell you the five ways that I use video the most and I'll cover that. Okay, so why number one? People would rather watch a video than read. I don't know if you know this, but for every minute a video where you would physically be speaking, it would be two typewritten pages. You think anyone's going to sift through two typewritten pages in an article? No. But if they see you reading it or seeing stats pull up, things like that, understand. At some of the ways that I write my books, I just sit with my um, little recorder when I'm in the car and I just talk, 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 talk. I have it transcribed. It ends up with pages after page after page. I edit the pages and out comes a book. It's really easy. I can do it in my car while I'm driving. It, even these sessions that I'm recording, I could have them transcribed, put into a book, and it would be all done. So, reason number one. Reason number two is the only way for us to outrank Zillow and Trulia is with video. You will not, no matter what you say, no matter who sells you a service, you will not outrank Zillow and Trulia. You cannot. They outspend you. They have listings to get clicked every single day. They have content that gets clicked every single day. You cannot outrank them, naturally, with text. The only way to appear on page one as a realtor will be with a video. And here's how you tell. Everybody, if you've got a computer, I want you to go to Google right now. 
and I want you to type in um, freehold home values and then just hit enter. So, anybody have um, that page up yet? Yeah. Okay. Scroll down for me, Teresa, and tell me if, if there's a video on that page. On page one, just scroll to the bottom. Yep. So, if you see no videos on the first page of Google for a search, you can get there. If you see a video for a search on the first page of Google, you need to then go over to YouTube and find out whether um, someone is already ranking, how many um, likes they have on the video, how long it's been on, how much authority it basically has. But if you go on to Google, you type in a search and there's no video on that first page, you can get there. Case in point, I did a video um, about I don't know, maybe three weeks ago for Middletown Home Values. I just took stats, which I'm going to show you the, the program I used to put it together. It took no more than 15 minutes for me to put it together. I put, I put it out on YouTube. I then asked people in my Facebook feed to go and click. Within an hour, I was on the first page of that Google search for Middletown, New Jersey Home Values. Now. I know that it works. I wanted to prove that it would work so that I could tell you all that it worked and then I took it down. See, because obviously I'm in referral, so I don't I don't need the traffic. But yes. So I just put in free old home values video and now lots. Three videos show. Right. But one Singapore property. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now, it, somebody wouldn't necessarily go to, um, if they wanted to know the value of their home in Freehold, they wouldn't necessarily put the name video after it. So the, I, the idea is, is that I'm going to teach you uh, next week how to write in the description, where to place the links in the description, and how to title your video so that it will rank on Google. It's, it's a science, but it's a recipe. What's that? We're not meeting next week, right? Instead. Good point, yes. So next week we skip. So our next class, um, because it's, it's right before Labor Day. So um, yeah, next Friday we do not meet. All right, yeah, don't show up, because I won't be here. <laughs> What's that? So if you want to get one week ahead, um, you can come to Homedale on Monday, but uh, Thursday and Friday are canceled next week, and then Monday of the next week would be canceled at Homedale. So if you want to get one week ahead, you can uh, come on Monday to Homedale. Is that a 10 o'clock also? 930. Yep. <laughs> so that's the only way you can outrank Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com on the first page of Google for a specific term is to get there. And also, you can get your listing videos out there. And if you use RCS, I've already done all the, um, you can press a button and it will all write it, uh, it'll create the title for you, it'll create the description for you, and it will tell you what the tags are and you just have to copy and paste over and back. So I've already done all the hard work because it's really just a recipe that you can insert content into. Super easy. So if you want to prove to your sellers that you're doing a great job in marketing, you say, oh, look, it's Zillow and me and Realtor.com. So I'm doing what I said in my 50-page marketing plan. I'm ranked on the first page of Google for you. Will you ever get clicks on that? You can, occasionally. In the end, it's free. So if you're looking for free things that you can do, it's free, other than your time. You don't have to boost anything, you don't have to pay for ads, you don't have to do anything. So long as there's not in that first page, so long as there's not a video that already ranks on that page one, you can get there. Yes. What, what kind of traction do you actually see from that type of ad? You know, like if you were to compare the, the effort, and not even put like a dollar value on it, but that time and effort to do that compared to going and just doing a Facebook sponsored ad or something yep. along those lines. Like, yeah. I would say it's one spoke in the wheel. Okay. So, um, and because it's free, 
you know. It's not really it's an that. ad, it's a video, right? It's an, yeah, it's just a video. It's, so, it's, is it um, an ad? And I'll show you what the video looked like that I did for Middletown. You'll see it. And um, so it's just, I use, I use it and recommend for my clients to use it for market reports. So monthly you're updating another one. And here's what happens. Let's say you're getting good traction in March, maybe not much in April, but then all of a sudden June, people are clicking on it like gangbusters. It gives you overall authority. So now whatever you post on YouTube gets ranked higher. Just like YouTube or um, just like Zillow, anything they post, it could be a flat out lie on Zillow. But Google would believe it because they have authority and they see Zillow as a, a huge player in the real estate market. So, yes. So you're going to post it through YouTube and then maybe if you do an email blast, all those other things, you could also link that same video. Exactly. So then you use it with a, a you know email link. You use it, you post it on uh, the link on Facebook. Anywhere that you can drive traffic to it tells YouTube this is a really important video. Lots of people are watching it, and that's what helps you get ranked on Google. Could you make that your engagement ad too, if it is just market? Numbers? Yeah, typically, if you're going to do an ad through Facebook, you would upload that same video into Facebook, and then use the Facebook video views instead. And I'll I'll cover that in week five. We did last week too, but uh, Facebook video views. Just very quickly, you can track people that have watched 10%, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 95% of your videos. And you can then put them into what we call custom audiences. So that's why you wouldn't necessarily boost um, a YouTube video. That you want it to go straight into Facebook. And that leads to number three. Because you can retarget off of these videos for all of these percentages that's why you would also upload it into uh, to Facebook here's how I use video listings which we kind of talked about create a slideshow um, you can use Animoto you can use from the agent toolbox that I suggested you can use the quick app or the um, splice app puts just photos pulled together, nice transitions, and 45 seconds to a minute later with some music in the background, you can upload that into YouTube using my predefined titles and descriptions, and you will get on the first page of Google within an hour, typically. Okay? Groups of listings. Maybe you're highlighting, maybe freehold your city and you want to do weekly groups of listings of the, the newest featured homes in a particular price category. You could then pull, again, pictures together, create a slideshow type video, and just promote the, the featured listings in Freehold. Now, I would also say this, because inevitably someone will ask, well, what if they're not KW listings? You would be surprised if you, as a KW um, person called some of the people that you may have even met in the past or just random and said listen I do a weekly featured home uh, video in freehold I'd like to include your video or I, uh, your property would you mind and most of them will say yeah sure let's just get it sold bring a buyer so long as in the description you say I'm bringing buyers to the following properties you can also add links to those properties because all, you're not promoting that listing you're promoting you as a buyer's agent going to those properties so long as you have their permission you're good to go we secure because of our MLS feed through RCS we secure a generic permission um, through the MLS to allow us to access all the listings but we can't necessarily promote individual listings outside of the brands that we're sponsored by articles Okay, yes. So I just want to make sure I understand. So if we're going to promote KW listings, we don't have to ask for permission? Technically, they're all under Adele. Uh -huh. She owns the listings, so she gives us kind of carte blanche. However, I do like to go that one step further and contact the listing agent. Um, there's only one that I've ever met here that didn't want his listings promoted. And it, I'm now featuring other people's listings along with him. So he's totally changed his mind because he gets leads out of it all the time. So it's uncommon that someone would say, no, you're not allowed to promote my listings. However, ask. Okay. 
it takes 10 seconds to ask a quick text, a quick email, a quick phone call. Most of the time people are gonna be like, yeah, let's get it sold. You got some way to do it, let's do it. Good question. Articles. So you come across an article or you write an article, uh, top 10 things that will trip you up as a first time home buyer. Something like that. Um, it, 10 ways to downsize before moving. Anytime you can put a number to an article, it's a good route to a quick uh, video. So you tackle one at a time. Whether it's written and you just flash three photos of downsizers maybe or packing a box and you say number one, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to appear in the video if you can use pictures and music and words. You don't have to be there. I'm going to show you the tool I use. But in the end, if you want to, go ahead and do it. Let's say you want to be interviewed even, where you're not directly looking at the camera. Maybe the camera's coming over your shoulder and you're being interviewed by somebody. Maybe you interview um, Greg from Landmark or, or some, a title rep or something like that. Say, tell me the three ways a first time home buyer gets surprised at closing. Videos like that should be somewhere around the 45 second mark. They will get watched. Spencer's video he did with Greg, um, Facebook Live, I think he did, and it was on, you know, first time home buyers and their mortgage experience. Last time I saw it, it was over 3,000 views. It gets shared and it's free. Guides, checklists, downloads, the same kind of thing. If you're going to highlight something, maybe the top five ways to do something. Then at the end, you say, hey, I've got all this in this nice one-page checklist. Go ahead and press this link and download it. And now you're collecting leads from these videos. Open House Live. So David asked about this. I love it when people go out on location to do a Facebook promotion um, based on their open house. Let me retrain your brain to make it effective, though. If you show up an hour before and record the video, it's not going to get enough traction in order to get somebody there. What I recommend is go there on Wednesday or Thursday and say, hey, join me at this open house at such and such an address. I'm going to walk you through the home. Shoot that on Wednesday or Thursday and let it percolate out there on the internet for three or four days. You can also save that to your Facebook page and boost it based on that. You're going to get some traction there. Doing it like we typically do it, where we just show up and, and we do a, a live right before the open house, it's great because it shows people you're busy, but in the end, if you want feet through the door, it's not enough time. People, aren't, it, people plan further and ahead uh, than that. So I recommend going on a Wednesday or Thursday, shooting that Facebook live, get a little live traction, but then it automatically saves to your business page when you go live. At that point, now you can advertise it. Now, if you go live from your personal, nothing you can do. So make sure you go live from your Facebook page. From your business page. From your business page. Do you, would you recommend going live from your personal page too? So yeah, if you want to duplicate it, sure. The intent, especially if you go live from your business page, the intent will never be that people will probably watch it that have liked your page. Uh, the intent is, is that now you have a video that you can advertise. Whereas if you go live from your personal, people will actually see it because most of us have at least, you know, 100 to 200 to 5, 1,000 friends, you know. So. Now I know you can share, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. So, so I know you can share posts on both Facebook and Instagram, but if you do one video, you'd have to go live on both platforms separately, or can you go live on one platform and it would carry over? That's interesting. I'm not sure. I don't use Instagram enough to know whether it would um, broadcast over. My thought is you'd probably have to go live from two different ones. So, yes. Good question. It's kind of similar. I w what I was going to say is like if we go live in the business, can that be shared to the person? Yes. You could share that across to your personal. And again, the, the difference is, is if you're going live from your business page, your intent would be just to have a video to boost to pay to boost, whereas live from your personal, it's more of a, hey, look at me, I'm, I'm a realtor and I'm busy. Yes. 
<laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the, the intent is different. Just like the intent between our Facebook videos and our YouTube videos, totally different intent. So our five branding messages are the other thing, uh, the other way I recommend, and we're going to spend a significant time, almost the entire second half today talking about those and I'm giving you the worksheets in the book that walk you right through everything from start to finish. The total recipe right down to the number of seconds that you should have um, and what you should include in each section. Everybody understand this one thing. I always like to give you one big takeaway. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be. Every video you think you want to do and blow it into this huge production but never do it will get you how many responses? Zero. 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 <clears throat> and people overthink video all the time and it's typically because they have a little bit of nervousness about it. As I show you the tools I use, you're going to be a little less nervous because it gives the people that don't want to appear on video a, a tool they can use to get around it. All right. For those of you that aren't afraid to get out there and photo or um, video yourself, do it. You know, I'll show you a few ways that you can get around it if you're fearful. Um, I met with these two lovely ladies. Yeah, uh, what yesterday or the day before, and they speak multiple languages. I told them, don't even speak English. Go after the people that speak your language because there's a commonality there. Now, you may want to re-record it in English, but your best route and quickest route to the cache is going to be to shoot in a native language. It's so, it, and it's easy. It's probably less daunting for you because you're not worried about the inflection of your words. You can just speak freely. And, you know, if somebody sees that, they're going to have a commonality with you. So if you speak a different language, absolutely use it to your advantage. All right, I'm going to skip ahead. How to get over your video fears. I didn't write this in the book because I didn't want anybody to uh, curse me out because number three is crazy. All right, number one. How do we get over our video fears? Deep breath. Just do it. <laughs> How many of you remember the first time you drove a car? Oh, God. A little while ago. Right. How nervous were you? Got this big, powerful machine, and a lot of us grew up in like the 70s and the 80s where it was like <laughs> there were boats, you know? There was boats smaller than our cars at that point. And you had to plan to stop. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to steer the whole bit. Difficult, right? But we were nervous. How nervous are you now? <laughs> Probably less nervous. Some people are still nervous when they drive, but we do it so often now that we just don't think about it. Just do it. Number two, you see results. How many times have you made phone calls and finally one phone call clicks and it makes the next phone call just a bit easier to make? Yeah. The more you do it, the more results you see, the easier it gets. Number three. Be interviewed. Barbara Walters made a, a lifetime. Oprah made a, a enormous wealth out of being an interviewer or being interviewed. So place the camera over your shoulder. Interview one of our professionals like a mortgage person or a title rep or a legal person. What happens is, is they call it transferred authority, which means when you're interviewing someone, their expertise makes you an expert. Oprah, think Oprah. She's really an expert about nothing. But she interviewed every expert in the entire world. So now, 
she should run for president. Oh, yeah. Okay? I'm not saying she should. I'm just saying everyone thinks she should. She's an expert. So she became... Right. So she became somebody because she interviewed all the somebodies. You can be the same way. President? No. no, yeah, well, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'll vote for you. You don't want to look at my closet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, also, be interviewed. Most of the time, the fear that we have of video is that we have to stare into it, and then we get eyes this big, and then we're just like, oh my gosh, okay? But the idea is if you're not staring into it, if someone's interviewing you and you're just answering questions, you're going to be okay. At some point, you might even like it and be like, hey, maybe we should just team up. I, I recommend pairing up with somebody that's another agent. If you're on a team, it's even easier. Say, I want you to ask me these five questions. I'm prepared to answer them. Remember, right? 45 seconds to no more than three minutes. That's it. We can do anything for that amount of time. Even if we hate it. Now, last one I'm going to share. Okay. If you're not a drinker, don't worry about it. I'm just saying I've recommended to numerous people that if by chance you have a little wine before you start, it's okay. I am not endorsing substance abuse in any way. So if you struggle with that, please don't come back and sue me, okay? Don't record, don't take a glass of wine and then record the car videos, okay? I'm not endorsing that. But listen, we all know a little liquid courage can go a long way. If you're freaked out in the first two to three times you do this, if you find yourself a little freer in your mind, a little wine can sometimes help. Okay? Don't sue me. <laughs> Don't get into that. <laughs> I'm going with the socially acceptable stuff. Okay? We all get a good chuckle about it because we know. We've all been there. The intent here is to actually do something and not just think about it and not just talk about it. This whole program, all 12 hours, is about doing it. The entire reason we put this book together is so that you have something to do. Don't just think about it anymore. Get it on paper and make it done. Okay. On page 43 of the book, you guys don't have one, so you can look on this one. Can I borrow one? I don't have any others with me. I'm out. What is sales? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Page 43 in the book is the agent toolbox. I don't recommend anything that costs you money with the exception of the one that says the fast stone capture, screen capture. And here's the thing. If you end up doing the top 10 reasons for something and you want to feature a screenshot where you're scrolling, Fast Stone Capture will actually record your screen as you're scrolling and make that into a video. Where people are using this the most, the clients that I have, they are taking the RCS 50-page marketing plan and they're emailing the screenshot video while they're explaining the things they do in the marketing plan. They'll record the video of them scrolling down the 50-page plan and they'll email that to somebody saying, this is everything I do. And as you can see, I've already done it for your property. Huge win for people. It will get your foot through the door. If you're trying to prove to a FISBO or an expired that you bring value that no other agent does, use that 50-page plan to your advantage, spend the $20 to get the fast stone capture because it does record your video as you're scrolling down. Or you can use Snippet. Um, it, there's plenty of tools out there for between $20 and $30. Screen mirroring iPhones. Screen mirroring just means that you can broadcast it, I think, up to somewhere else. I don't know that it, you can do like a screen okay. capture or anything. I, 
to be honest, though, I don't do a ton of my iPhone. So, yeah, I think it's totally different screen mirror. It's twenty dollars a month. No, flat fee. It's a software, so it actually loads onto your laptop. And I obviously I recommend using it on a laptop or a Mac. We just talked about where to put the videos. Definitely Facebook and YouTube. How to retarget with the videos. All right. So the entire rest of the time today, we're going to talk about the video series that I recommend that you record. Turn to, I think it's 77 if I'm not mistaken. Nope, totally lied. Hold on. 80, page 80. Now, as I've been talking about over the course of time here, Especially with Facebook, because that's where we can um, do the most advertising because it's also the, the least expensive. When we use retargeting, what happens is we'll put out one ad. Let's say it's a lead ad. What can happen is with a lead ad, if somebody fills out a form, we can then send them into a video series. So we would have video number one, video number two, video number three, video number four, and video number five. These are the videos we're going to talk about. And what happens is they fill out the lead form, we get the lead in, and then it automatically kicks off a retargeting campaign for our video series. In the first video, is our general branding video. The next video I think is the community video. The next video is the lifestyle video and so on. We're going to go through them one by one and why we do them this way. Okay. Now, hold on one sec. You could also, let's say you use a, a lead ad. People might fill out the form here, but you can also retarget people that opened the form but did not fill out the form. So the fact that they clicked on the form but didn't even fill it out, you can still retarget them on this. Also, you're at an open house. You've got the sheets or you've used RCS to plug in people automatically through the internet. You can put them into your email custom audience, which we covered um, last week, but we'll cover again. You go into your email custom audience and you kick off your branding series weekly for everybody that attended your open house. Here's how much you'll spend per contact per week if you do this open house. 10 cents. Facebook cannot overcharge you because it's going to pay per impression and if there's only 20 people in that group, they can only show it to that 20 people and it may be like one cent or two cents. They can't overcharge you. So there's no reason in the world not to take your open house lists that you get and make the custom audience in Facebook simply so that you can retarget them. Facebook will then track how many of those people have watched those videos. And while you don't know exactly who it is, if they've watched 75% or 95% of the video, you can actually resend them this form again. So it can totally be this ridiculous cycle of automation that just goes crazy. But the key is, if you're constantly going after what I call cold traffic, you could easily be between one and three dollars for a click or a lead. If you start retargeting, you're actually getting good leads for like 10 cents, 20 cents. That's how you win at Facebook. If you're constantly going after the cold people, you're not winning. You're overspending for no reason. Here's why. You've heard me say this before. Most people that don't know you will need seven contact attempts from you in order to feel like they know you enough to contact you. If you're going after the quick phone call and the quick text, what do I call it if you get that? Luck. Luck. 
It's not because you're good, it's because you're lucky. Now, you can also manufacture that luck by converting somebody at number two attempt or number three attempt by simply doing all the right things. This is how you win, right here. This is how you can spend $1,000 a month on Facebook and start converting people because you're spending it in the right way. You're saying, listen, every lead that I get, it could take seven attempts. If I give up after one or two, I'm in big trouble. I just wasted a lot of money, especially when it was pennies on the dollar to just continue on. We're gonna go through, uh, I can't remember if it's week five or week six, but my follow-up series, 30 days, 30 contacts with these people. Five occur on that first 24 hours. Mix of text message, email, and, and phone calls. Absolutely essential. I had a guy yesterday in class that kept badgering me about conversion rates and conversion rates and conversion rates. And I said, how many times do you get a hold of somebody 30 times in that first 30 days? And he said, never. And I said, don't expect to convert then. This job, real estate, there's too many of us to assume that we're gonna just have manufactured luck after one attempt or two attempt. If they haven't yelled, stop, stop don't stop. <laughs> this is where it all ties together. You start using Facebook retargeting, you don't have any effort. You set this up once and it just goes. Facebook will gladly spend 10 cents of your money per day and you don't have to do a thing. You set it up once and just let the system work. And while it seems complex, it's not. But you have to have what I call the assets first in order for all of this to work. This is what we're gonna work on today, the video assets. Before I do, let me show you that one tool because I skipped over it. So this is a service that I subscribe to that literally what happens is, and I'll, I'll prove to you right away, I'm going to look up um, Middletown, home, Middletown, New Jersey home values. The first link that pulls up typically is Zillow. I can go to this page and copy the URL, which you can't see because for some reason the screen is zoomed. I can copy the URL at the top, go into this service, which I subscribe to. I can create a video by clicking the button, and again, I'm sorry that you can't see all of the screen. Paste it in here, press go, select my video size, select the template, and now it will pull in that entire article and all I have to do, and I'm sorry again I can't show you, is I just click on the stats that appear in the article and it automatically starts building whatever I click on. This so what happens is at the end of the video you say something to the effect of statistics Provided by Zillow, RPR. It's no different than a, um, a term paper where you're just referencing. So, I'm not going to say what the site is on the video, but I'll tell you guys, I'll write it down after class. I'll, I'll tell you the reason why. A lot of these companies, because it's so cool what you can do, get acquired and then all of a sudden it's going to be on video and people are going to you know, email me for years asking me, oh, how can I get to this? It's a bad link. So, <laughs> all right, <laughs> so I'm doing it for um, my own saving. However, let me play t for you one of the videos that I did, the Middletown one.
Okay, that's it. I just chose the, all the defaults. I didn't spend any time on it at all to customize it because the intent was I just wanted to know I get on Google page one within a couple hours and, and indeed that's what happened. The object is you have the power to use something just like that if you don't want to appear on video. Super simple, yes? How do you stay on Google? So you just keep updating. If you did a monthly market report for instance, perfect. Kelly, the, the app Kelly now, if everyone's posting out there, tell me your zip code and I'll give you the market stats or whatever. Use those stats. You know, it, they're so, it's so easy to use and create. You can even do it through PowerPoint if you don't want to pay for the tool. The, the tool right now costs, I think, $40 a month. You could make 40 videos or 50 videos in the month and then cancel it. And you literally have assets for an entire year. Now, obviously, a monthly market report's not going to work because, you know, you have to keep it current. But you could do the top 10 this and the top 10 that and the top 7 this and five ways for this. And five. You could do... 25, 30, 40 of those all at, in one month. Get them all up there, or space them out, whatever you want to do. Super simple. So if you're afraid of the video, you don't want to appear on video, that's an easy way to do it. All right? Let's talk about the branding series. And again, after class, I'll tell you once I press stop on that. Um, okay. Turn in your book, page 80 if you're not there. We're going to go through this first one. I'm going to explain to you what we're going to do. And then at that point, I'm actually going to have you work through one or two of these pages. <coughs> Let me erase this because I always end up writing. So the branding video. It's all about giving the world a true sense of who you are and what you do. Very little talking, lots of two to three to four second action clips. Um, call to action is always call or text uh, and share the video with anybody you know. The idea is to try and get eyes on these videos. So skip down to uh, halfway down the page where it says major problem. The idea is to try to get what? Get eyes. Get eyes, eyes. on these videos. Okay, so the major problem, in a branding video, somebody would watch this for the first time. What's their major problem that would keep them from hiring you? They don't know who you are. Don't know who you are. So what do you think the focus of this video should be? Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Now, what are the biggest complaints that sellers, let's even take Fizbo's because it's a an easier target. What's the biggest complaint that a FISBO has about realtors? Commission. Okay, commission. What else? They don't like realtors. They don't, well, yeah, none of them do, but that's usually for reasons. Don't think you'll spend enough time commitment. Right, so commitment. We don't do nothing. Realtors don't do nothing. Yep, lazy, right? What else? Let's do two more problems. They think they know as much as you do. They yep. More than you. No more. <laughs> less, less, less. Value that they want. Value. Okay, so let's talk about this. And by the way, I think I mentioned this last week, but for those of you that weren't here, what's the number one most profession of somebody that's a FISBO? Accountant. 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 Accountants. And lawyers. Lawyer. Engineer. Engineers. They're all numbers people. That's why they complain about number stuff. Time, commission, lazy, because they work hard. Value, they know more because they're typically smart. <laughs> so what on earth can we address that could get somebody like a FISBO to get us to know more? So what we've done is to get their attention, the best thing you can do in your branding video to get somebody's attention, well, there's two different things. You can come on the screen and do something crazy. So if you have a personality that you would jump into this, like David this morning was talking about filming a video where he would pretend he's like a superhero. 
You know, I call him KW man. OK, he might jump in and open his shirt and have a KW on his it, something like that will get attention. Super right. Super right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And honestly, I just did a transaction with them. Last one. His agent was like amazing. She was boom right on her game. One of the best agents I ever worked with. So but yeah, it, people the people know it. So yeah, I haven't worked with you. Well, yeah. Not be. So you can get attention by doing something crazy, flashing words even on a screen, crazy something Eddie? like that. Crazy Eddie? Right. Same thing. Or you can come right out and say, hi, my name is Brent. I'm from Keller Williams. And I know you think I make too much commission. <laughs> Shock value. Shock value. OK. And I know you don't want to pay me a commission. <laughs> exactly. I know you think I'm lazy. I know you think you know more than me. Like you call them out. And what happens is 10 to 15 seconds in, you've got their attention. Mm -hmm. Now, how much more powerful is that than, oh, my name's Brent, and I've been in business for 10 years, and I close approximately 10 million transactions per year. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, exactly. It's all the same stuff. So what you want to do for every one of these is isolate the people you most want to reach and come up with the five reasons that they would not do business with you or the five problems that they have. And as we go through each sheet, they're slightly different. And if you want to get attention right away, call it out. Say, you know, it, even for, for you ladies, when I've encouraged you to um, talk in your language, start speaking in your language and say, do you want to deal with somebody that speaks your language? I'm your one. You know, call out what some of their biggest issues are. See how powerful that is? 10 to 15 seconds in, you're now being lent just enough of their attention to get to the next section which is 15 to 20 seconds and all along the way the progression of the video is not to be interesting it's to get their attention for another 15 to 20 seconds and another 60 seconds so that by the end they get your contact information and you've got a phone call or a text yes if I Right. So record the same video in English. And now you've got the best of both worlds. But tell me this. If you spoke in Chinese, do you think several Chinese people would call you? So you could look at 10 English-speaking people that might ignore you or two Chinese-speaking people. And maybe those two Chinese people would be the ones that call you. Whereas if you spoke in English, everybody might ignore you. What if you spoke in both language? Exactly. Both languages. Go back and yeah. forth. You're going to capture time? those people who think that you have a market that they can't tap. Exactly. And, and you, can you target by language? Like, uh, Some things, yes. Ask what language you speak. Right. So. It, it's sometimes able to be done and sometimes not. Like I just tried to do it a month and a half ago and it didn't work. <laughs> but I have used it in the past. Something like a top 10 ways for this they would probably be okay in, in a different language. Whereas if you're doing something property specific, they might try and accuse you of steering somebody. So, oh, interesting. yeah, yeah. So, um, but either way, language is such a powerful thing. Never think of your language, your dialect, your inability to speak English as a deterrent to your real estate career. You should use it to your advantage every time. Yes? But I don't think it's a good idea to, to speak both languages, if you speak two languages. In the same video? In the same video. Yeah, so it's worth a try. I, because I've never done that, I wouldn't know yes or no, but I'm a huge fan of just doing it and seeing what works. I, I've had letters that I thought were killer and I've sent them out with zero response and then there's other things I've sent out that were total garbage and they converted <laughs> okay you just don't know until you try you just don't know all right so let's go on to the next part pain points we just talked about the pain points. Now, typically when you're, exag or when you're going through the pain points, you want to make it slightly worse. Okay, you want to poke the bear just a little bit more, just for impact. Then you want to go into the 
aspirational picture, which is, I know what you want. Let's talk about the FISBO, for instance. I know what you want. You want to get your house sold for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. If you called that right out and then painted a picture of how you've helped other FISBOs in the past, it's powerful. And then you say something about, what if I could sell your house in seven days and I know your house has been on the market for 30? This is how I do it with the 50-page marketing plan. Scroll the video down showing them the 50-page marketing plan. This is what a realtor does. I'm actually not lazy. Look what I do. Okay? So you need to debunk each one of these things in the aspirational picture. Say, what would it feel like if you could finally get to where you're going in the least amount of time with the most commission in your hand? I can show you how to do it. I'm not going to tell you on this video. You need to call or text me. All right? That's the aspirational picture. Now, solutions, features, and the benefits would be, let's say it's a FISBO and you're trying to prove value. A feature would be, this is my 50-page marketing plan. This is what I use. Look. Scroll, 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 scroll. I'm showing it to you right here on video so you don't think I'm lying to you. And feature and benefit. NAR statistics say that I can get you 20.2 more percent on your home than you can get purely based on MLS exposure. Look up the stats. That's a feature. Okay? Call to action. How many of you know what a call to action is? Okay? Call to action is something that's very simple. It needs to answer this question. Do this. And don't get elaborate with this. If you want more information about this, call or text me 732-XXXXXXX. Don't get cute with the call to action. Tell them exactly what you want them to do. Now in video, it would be wonderful if we could just convert people right then and there. But just as we mentioned early on, if this is your first branding video, this is the first one they get, how many more of these do you think they're going to need in order to maybe be convinced to call or text you? Six. Quite a few. Minimum probably at least one more, possibly five or six more. What can advance your purpose is the next section, a credibility story. There's two tiers of this. If you can have somebody appear on video or multiple people appear on video that will give you a video testimony that you can include and put that clip into this video, works amazing. Because it's literally people on screen saying, I worked with so-and-so, they did wonders for me. If you've not done any transactions, because I know we have some new agents, that's okay. Flash words up from people that are just credibility sources for you. Could be a friend, extremely loyal. Could be another friend, always a great communicator. Highlight what the five things that they hate the most about us and debunk them by having people give you a character reference. It doesn't mean that You've been, I mean, some of us have been in business a long time and have multiple transactions. Some of us have none. So use parts of your personality then that will debunk some of these myths about us and earn trust. Okay? So, yep. like if you have a lot of testimonials, like written testimonials, yes. can you flash those like Perfect. snippets of those testimonials? Yes. Another thing with your screen capture, let's say you've got a hundred Zillow reviews. Go on your Zillow page, press screen record, and just start scrolling down the page. This is what everybody says about me right on Zillow. You want to check it out? Go click ahead. All right, there's plenty of ways to get people, even if no one's giving you a testimonial ever, there's plenty of ways to, to get them. Okay? And don't be afraid, again, to ask people that have been character references of you in the past to give you just a character reference. 
If it's just a few words that flash on the screen, all you're trying to build is trust. That's it. Um, and then finally, we end up with the video at the end, call to action two. It's simply a reiteration of that first one. If you want more information about this, call or text me at boom, 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 boom. That's it. 45 seconds, done. Two to three minutes, done. Quite, quite simple. Now, going forward, if you use this, template out the video so that you can brainstorm what you want to say or to appear. Use this recipe in the book to start to detail exactly what this first branding video is going to be about. Now let's detail the next one, the lifestyle video. The lifestyle video is all about the uh, persona that you've chosen. So let's, let's think about downsizers. Let's do a downsizer one. What could you say to a downsizer to open up a video that would get attention? You want less maintenance. Sure. Stairs. Maybe, maybe a little Stairs. more generic. So maybe we say something like um, top 10 uh, ways to downsize, something like that. Maybe that's the title of this next video. Because remember, this is all about one persona. This isn't about everybody. This is about one persona. You have to play on the back nine. Exactly. Get, you can get as creative and cute with this initial <coughs> shock factor or whatever you think your demographic of people will, um, will be about to get their attention. Get it. You know, even the language thing. Maybe at that point, your first 10 seconds of this would be Chinese text on the screen and, and you saying something. At that point, they might automatically assimilate you to, to something that they want to watch. All right, next. Pain points. Let's talk about their pain points. You guys kind of got into that. So you could do maintenance. Upper levels. So we're looking for a one level place. Taxes. Taxes. What else do they struggle with as a downsizer? Bills. Bills. And emotional. Let's do emotional because I like that for downsizers. So, in the next section, you can form these as questions. Do you struggle with any of the following? Always have a maintenance. Your knees hurt. You're bending down, pulling weeds. Are you tired of going up and down stairs? Are the taxes too much for your fixed income? Are the bills piling up? But you may be, you know, I wouldn't use trepidatious, but you may have an emotional connection that makes you not want to leave this place. If you set all five of those in that next section of the video, you would definitely get the attention of a downsizer. Now how much more by calling out their problems are they going to think that you're a specialist in this area than if you just say, hey, I've been in business 30 years. Okay? Because what have we done? We've made it about them, not about us. And we all know from the first three weeks of this class, the less we make it about us and the more we make it about them, the far better it converts. Because you haven't earned the right to even talk about you until number seven. Because no one cares about you until they've earned or until you've earned their trust by, by them, by basically saying, I can be the guide to get you on to the next phase of your life. I don't care how long you've been in business, although length of business does come into play, but it typically doesn't come into play until stage three or stage four. Do you, do you feel that um, hitting on someone's emotion, because you, you wrote emotion there, Yep. hitting on someone's emotion is 
is more impactful or hurt, way more hurts you more in China than like really I think there's getting under their skin right them, I guess I think there's very tactful ways of doing it okay um, for instance Tom uh, What's Magnum PI? Who's that guy? Tom yeah. He has a reverse mortgage um, commercial. Have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm running reverse mortgage ads for some guys, and I am failing miserably. Because I'm not in that demographic. You're not Tom Selleck. <laughs> I'm not Tom Selleck either. You're absolutely right. But I heard that commercial, and I mimicked some of the terms that were in that commercial, and I started getting leads. Because Tom Selleck, through that commercial and in that creative copy, focused me on what the messages were that I needed to isolate. All right, so it was a messaging thing. So saying something like, instead of, you know, your family is keeping you here. Yes. Say something like, are you, you trapped, you feel trapped in your current lifestyle, something exactly. like that. More generic words, but. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that, that like, I mean, I'm just saying that's not too vague. That no, certainly not. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. As you get into this a little bit more, you may say, man, this is pretty broad. Maybe I could break this down a little bit more even. Maybe I could make a five video series out of this and, and just publish it. Something like that. And here's what I'll say about our demographics too. And I mentioned this, I think, in week one. If you've got a little gray hair, <laughs> like I do, a yeah. They know me. Oh yeah, no, I have it. I've earned mine. <laughs> Mine's covered. Bob. If you've got a little gray hair, then the 55 and over population is probably a good one for you. If if you don't have gray hair, maybe you consider doing the the first time home buyers a little bit more. Um, if so you if you look. Go? Yeah, let your roots go. <laughs> think of all the money you'll save, too. You can put that into advertising. <laughs> I know how much my wife spends every quarter. It's like, what? <laughs> just shave it off. Okay. No, no, I'm just kidding. Hey, don't, hey, don't. Hey. <laughs> I'm, see, now I'm in trouble. Yeah. You're waiting, you're waiting Great. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you tapped on too many emotions. That's right. <laughs> Great. Now divorce is an option. So. <laughs> All right, aspirational picture. Let's just move right on. <laughs> Keeping your marriage healthy. No, here we go. Aspirational picture. So again, in this instance, some of the best things we could do to paint the emotional picture would be, imagine that someone else does your landscaping for you. Imagine that you just go about your day in a, a less stressful way. Maybe in your new one bedroom place, you don't have to clean every single day. And think about it, and don't be afraid to get specific. Because listen, we all know, it, we've been in downsizers homes where they complain about very specific things. I used to hear it all the time, people would say, oh, everything's dusty all the time. If that's the way they talk, then mention it. Say, listen, if you've got 12 rooms in your home and everything's dusty, now you'll only have four rooms in your home. So it's eight less rooms to dust. We may think that that's too specific, but if you're talking their language, you'll earn their trust. It's so critical that we look at these people not as a transaction, but as a human with real problems that we can solve. We can help guide them to where they need to be by simply calling out these problems. Go back to the language thing, because we've had this theme going through today. It, you should absolutely call out and say, if you're having trouble communicating because you speak a different language, then rifle right into that language and say, you're not gonna have that same trouble if you work with me. It's huge. Huge, but create the aspirational picture. All right? Now, remember, remember back on the first day where everyone was kind of concerned, you know, like, oh, I'm specializing in one group of people. I'm going to alienate everyone else. See where this is going now? When you can talk one group's language, you can convert. But if you're trying to market to everyone, you market to no one because you can never get specific enough with one group of people to ever convert on something. It just doesn't work. That's why we get specific. So the solution, 
Remember, you're the guide. You're not the hero of the story. You're the one that can point out to them how to get to the next level. In the end, when they achieve the desired result, it's because they made the decision. You just help guide them there. That's why we don't matter in this until they've already learned to trust us because we're simply taking them from point A and offering the solutions. And we all know that you know, without our solutions, they could probably solve their own problems, but they would rather work with somebody that could guide them through seamlessly. Best testimonials that ever come out are that we just had the most seamless experience. Janet was so great to work with. She did all the details. She communicated with us well. It, it's not necessarily about how lovely Janet is. It's about the work that Janet did along the way. It's a reason that that happens. Again, what's that? Can I quote you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just come right out and say, I'm a lovely human. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Brent. Trust me. Yeah. Call to action. Again, same call. You could use the exact same call to action forever in every video. Call or text me to learn more information about this. That is so simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Credibility story. Let's say we're on this lifestyle video of the 55 and overs. Who do we want as our credible source here? Somebody with gray hair. Somebody with gray hair. That means we cannot color our Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so maybe one month you, you color your hair as the agent, and then the next month you don't color your hair, and then you give yourself a testimony. <laughs> Yeah, or you buy a wig. Yeah, there you go. That's getting creative. <laughs> Call to action two. Simply a reiteration of what you just said. Call or text me. Boom. Done. Now remember, through all of these, you're only doing these once. You can refresh them if you like, but the investment here is that you're shooting each one of these videos once and you literally could use them for years to come. Really? It, think about it, how many of you have the same headshot for your realtor as you've had for like five years. Oh, okay? <laughs> because we shot it once and we just keep using it. So you can shoot these videos and keep using them. They don't grow old because most of them don't have timestamps associated with them. Unless you put music in it. Or, yeah, if you put music with them that it could date it a bit. Uh -huh. but. Generic music. Yeah. So, community videos. Community videos are slightly different. They're a little more fast-paced. But the idea is, in this third video, you're choosing either the city or the culmination of cities, the three, that you want to drive the most business in. And you're now the tour guide. So your intent isn't necessarily to convince someone to buy a specific property, it's to buy into the community. I guarantee you of all of these videos, if you put this one up on YouTube, this one's the one that will get you the most phone calls or texts. Because if you're the tour guide, it's remarkable how few videos there are for a search. I did Manalapan, New Jersey, just a general Manalapan, New Jersey search uh, in Jackson at the class. No videos on that first page for Manalapan, New Jersey. If you shoot a video, title it correctly, put in the description correctly, and you have different points of interest as links and as text in that um, video, you will start to rank for Manalapan, New Jersey. And let me, sh well, I can't do it because the screen gets cut off, but here's what you do. This is, it's so simple, I don't need. Would you say title the video correctly? Yeah, yeah you're going to learn that in week five. It's, it's easier to just follow the script I give you. Number one, if you want to rank on a city for a video, go to Google and type in just the city name, so Manalapan. Pardon me for the spelling errors, I'm trying to be fast. And the top, it's 
usually seven links that are there need to be the top seven things that you feature in that community video. One of the top ones, almost always the top one is going to be Wikipedia. You simply have to reference a stat on that community from Wikipedia and give reference to it inside of your description. That reference back to the URL on Wikipedia, which I'll, again I'll show you down the line how to do that, you putting that in your description will start to create a link between your video and Wikipedia. Now, the other thing that you're going to see, typically the borough or the city or the municipality, whatever it is, their .org will appear. So what you do is you go shoot a video of the sign or take a picture of the sign, add that to your video. Next you're going to see schools, you're going to see restaurants, you're going to see a lot of different things. So for all of the top seven, even ten things, that should be the, the premise of your uh, your community video. Google will start to rank you more more highly because the things that are already ranked on Google if they appear on your video Google starts to see that there's a synergy between your video and what the top rankings already are. In the community video all you're doing is at the end you're simply saying, if you would like to get more information about Freehold, New Jersey, call or text me. Boom. But be the tour guide. If you're comfortable, say, this is what I know about the Borough Hall. This is what I know about this park. I love this pizza from such and such. You know? Also, if you remember from the first week, especially with restaurants, if you go in and ask the owner or the manager if you can shoot a short clip in there of them working or tossing pizzas or whatever you do and then all of a sudden the video starts to rank because your clip is in there you can go back to them and say huh, amazing it's ranking I've never done this before and it's ranking so you're gonna get all sorts of free publicity at that point they'll be like seriously how'd you do that and then you'll be like oh well let's sit and now you've got an opportunity to sit down with somebody that's an influencer already in the community, throw 25 business cards on the counter, and you got some free publicity out of it. Okay, you got opportunities there. So if you need to go the free route, it's a great way to do it. But choose the people that are already ranking on Google as the ones you want to do. If you look up Manalapan restaurants, there'll be a whole column in the left hand side that gives you like the top five restaurants that are ranking. They may not even be the best ones to be honest with you. Their food might blow. But <laughs> because they're ranking you want to put them in the video. I saw that. Yeah. Because I did Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Same thing. And I'm looking at some of these restaurants and I'm like ew I would even, never even eat there. Right. But they came up on the first page. Right. But if they're ranking it's because people somebody liked them or they've been online for a long time, so get them in the video. Or they're paying to be up there, right? Now, usually when they rank there, they're not paying there, unless it, um, say, it would say ad at the top, yeah. But the ones that appear in like the left column, it's because they've had a smart person in the background that helps them rank on the business pages, so. Okay, that's the community video. Super simple. Here's your challenge for the next month. Do not ignore this because if it gets to January, you're going to wish you had. Go start stockpiling pictures in two to three second to a ten second video clips of all of your favorite parts in your target city. Because guess what happens in December? There's no daylight. There's dirty snow. It's cold you're not going to get pretty pictures or pretty video. So get out and start stockpiling. In, in, the, um, in the marketing world, we call it this. We call it B-roll. Think about the marketing video that I showed you where, of the market stats. 
If you had a hundred pictures to choose from, you would have no problems making that video in about 10 minutes. It took me 15 minutes because I went out on Google and just stole a bunch of pictures knowing that I would take them back down. Now you can't do the same because yours are actually going to live out there for a while and that's copyright infringement. So you need to shoot your own pictures. Oh, really? But it's so easy to go and just shoot a picture of a sign or a video of a sign or you know, no one's going to care that you did that. I mean people do it on social media every day. So we don't need permission to go to like the township no. sign and take a picture? No, no. certainly not. And again, here's, here's all you really need to do. If you can take a real uh, quick picture with your iPhone, or if you want to shoot a video, just think like a videographer would, where you've got your phone, you click it on the video, and you just zoom in with yourself and zoom back. Or maybe you start at the bottom of the sign and then, you know, do a little pan. So easy. And you'll get to the point where you'll start thinking about stuff like that because you'll see in the videos what actually garners interest. Easy to do. And you can just use your iPhone. That's why I'm telling you do it now in the, in the summer and in the fall. You can do a whole four seasons of freehold video. Obviously you can't show all four seasons right now, but you could do summer clips now and then fall. You'll have winter soon and then you wait for the spring and now you've got a four seasons in freehold video. Perfect. A minute. 45 seconds to a minute long. That's it. I see the wheels turning for everybody. And again, I'm telling you, you don't have to be on these videos. Your, your intent is to try and get some rankings for them. All right, let's go on to the next one. So video four, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit. Educational videos. We kind of did this a little bit with the persona videos, but these would definitely be your, your top five things. Um, it, First time home buyers. Maybe it's the top five things you don't know about closing. Or the five things that will kill a deal for um, a seller. It, you know, use some shock value and get into. These are your educational videos e um, specifically for your persona. Don't try and be generic by reaching everybody because every segment of our personas have different problems. I would even say first time home sellers, which are also move up buyers, are gonna have two different segments of problems, one as a seller and one as a buyer. Okay, lots of, lots of ammunition there. Last video, just in the interest of time, we'll skip to the last one, is the why video. The why video basically is, okay, you've seen me on Facebook, you've seen me at the open house, you've seen me all over the place, now you've been fed these five videos, it's time to make a decision. Okay? This is, bless you, this is about your credibility, this is about why you should work with me. Now this one actually will mirror the first one that you did, it's kind of like another call to action type video. Whereas you're saying, basically, I know you have this problem, I know you have this problem. It could be that you're calling out, hopefully you've seen me enough at this point for credibility. Whatever it is that you say, just understand that this video, you want to be a little pushy. Don't be afraid to call it out and say, I've shown you this, I've shown you that, I've shown you this, now it's time to work with me. Put it in their head. Be a persuasive seller. Put, put in enough ammunition in their brain that they feel like they need to come back to you with it. Kind of like, what are you waiting for? Cool. Exactly. Uh, you, you could even say, you've seen four videos, what are you waiting for? Just <laughs> text me. And then think about it. What would they say in their brain if they heard that? Oh, well, I don't know. I don't want them to sell me anything just yet. So then you come out and say, I know you think that I'm going to try and sell you something. I'm not. Just text me. Let's just have a chat. Anytime you can call out people's objections, if you can think to yourself, oh, I would probably say this at this point, then the next words out of your mouth on that video should be, I know you're thinking this. Don't. That's what Tom Selleck does on that reverse mortgage video. I know 
people have told you this, and I thought the same, but here's what the reality is. That's what he said. And as soon as I used that type of language in my ads, boom, got leads. Because you're calling out what people are already thinking in their minds, and you're saying, it's okay to think like that. Now pick up the phone and, and converse with me. I already understand you feel that way, so I'm not going to try and oversell you on things. So okay. Yeah, how, Claudia. How you will know if all these people have seen your video? Because when you set it up, it goes from one to the other. Yep. So what happened, that's a good question. Claudia says, well, how will you know if people have seen these videos? Well, in the Facebook stats for each one of these ads, because every single one of these, the five would be a different ad, you'll see in the stats whether people actually watch them or not. You won't know specifically who does unless they've reached out to you. But the intent is that you have them and they're ready. Here's the other thing, because this got brought up earlier. Once you have these videos, you can use them in a million different ways. You can use them for you know, generic ads that go out. You can use them in email links in your signature. Maybe you say in your signature, you know you just did an open house for a downsizer. Maybe in the signature of that, you say, here, here's a link to my video for the top 10 ways to, to downsize without stress or something like that. You can use these videos anywhere, on the back of your business cards. Start putting the links on and say, hey, have you seen this video? Or do you struggle with this? Click here. If, lots of different uses. The idea is that if you have it, you can use it. If you don't have it, you can't use it. If you want to convert, it's more complicated than just simple calling and texting I'm trying to get to here I told you last the last week of this week six we're gonna go through the follow-up sequences that I use what page is that? this is right at the end 181 there's several for different reasons but interspersed in these when it says that it's time for a phone call if you know you're calling a downsizer and saying, hey, it's Claudia. I know I didn't get you today, but I just wanted to share a video with you. Here's the video address. And just say, you can type this into your browser. And then say in the thing, I'm also going to send you a text that has a link. And then you can just click the link. You'll be surprised because you're having a reason. When you text somebody, if there's no reason, you're not going to get a response. But if you've got something they can click, then you've got some way to track that they actually did something with that text. On YouTube, it tracks um, how many people have viewed the video. So in the text you send, if you send a link to that video, it can be tracked. You know that yesterday you had 28 views and today you've got 40. If you sent 12 texts, then that means all 12 people probably clicked on that video. Everyone always wants to know, how can I track this? How can I track this? If, if it's a value or not? Well, this is, these are the ways you do it. If you use a Bitly link, remember in the Agent Toolbox, I told you to sign up for Bitly? If you use a Bitly link, then you can track every single click that goes in and out. And it tells you where they were at the time and where it's going to now. And it's free. Lots of good stuff there. Okay, so before we close, I want to make sure that um, your questions get answered if this is foggy. Because such a huge part of this program is about getting these five videos in place because you're going to use them constantly. And I know if you shoot these five, you'll probably end up with five more and then five more and then five more and pretty soon you'll be ranking all over the place. So, any questions? Yes, sir. A couple quick questions. Yeah. On, on, so, I know now with Facebook, they're doing ads as you're watching videos. 
Is that based on a certain amount of time you've watched five minutes worth of video and now you get another ad? Yes. Or is there a way to say, okay, if the video is under 30 seconds, that person won't get with a, hit with an ad? It seems like for me it's all different. Yes and yes. So what will happen is, is if you use retargeting, you can say, I only want to serve this next ad to those that have watched 50% or 75% or 95%. Or you can say, anybody that watched the previous video for any length of time, I want to serve them this next one. So you get to choose. Okay. Now, go ahead. Sorry, I don't think I asked the question clearly. Okay. What about ads that are then in your video? You know how like... Oh, oh in-stream ads? Right. Yeah, um, are, you, are you asking if you can block those out? Yeah, like is there an algorithm to try to... Like, I don't think you can block them out. 30 seconds. Yeah, I don't think you can block out the in-stream ads. Okay, so they just happen at a random point. Yeah, I, you know what, that's a good question. I need to find out the answer. If you'd hold me accountable to that, that'd be great because um, I know there's a guy I could probably ask that would know that, but um, that would be effective to know. My thought is that you probably can't block out an in-stream ad. Right, yeah, my guess is it's probably every certain yeah. amount of time that you're watching videos and it's just random. Right. No, Probably. Yeah, that's a good question, though. And, and then you mentioned, and it's my ignorance for not knowing, but you mentioned, I guess, you have an agency and you work with different people. So are these the, obviously the kind of things that you do? That's, that's what we do. We can have about putting yep. So what we do, and I'll, I'll tell you more about this later after week six. Um, we're, we offer several services, basically, that would take complex technological and marketing processes, and we just do the work for you. So um, my, my goal for people around here, since you get my teaching a lot, would be to allow you um, to, to do some of these concepts first, to put them in operation, and then let me kind of put things together in the funnels for you. Because I know that each one of you guys can do this. You know, I've taught for years here about different things. So compiling a video, I would never sit and compile a video for somebody because I know you can do it on your own. The intent then would be, how can I help you set up retargeting funnels so that you don't have to worry about the complexity of it? That's something I understand and I do. Um, but in the end, you know, the same question came up yesterday. My clients typically spend a minimum of $500 per month on Facebook ads, for instance. Some spend way more. So there has to be an opportunity there for you to be successful with it, and typically a dollar amount has to follow with that. So. Um, you know that's just that's the reality of Facebook ads in a lot of ways and Google if you end up using Google ads at some point um, you know five six bucks a click is not uncommon for things like home values you might be two hundred dollars deep before you ever get somebody to even fill out the form so you can waste a lot of money on Google but the difference is somebody's on Google specifically typing in something and if they click there's probably more intent there so that's that. Now, if you guys don't know, also, I'll, I'll pitch this. Um, we do have a service, if you have a coming soon or a just listed property that you're putting out, where if you get a hold of us in advance especially, we'll do the whole 50-page marketing plan for you. So once you've got your professional picture shot, we'll make sure that we take it from coming soon and just listed, where you're getting leads delivered to your phone. Um, at that point, we, we just take that whole plan and just do it for you. It's $150. $50 goes directly to ad spend where you hopefully you get some leads. We've had as few as one or two on a property and as much as 41 on the property. It's the same amount of ad spend. It just depends on, it often depends on the quality of the photos and how desirable the price and the property is. So basically for $100, we're doing the entire um, marketing plan for you, the whole 50 pages. So you can pitch it to your sellers and say, this is what I'll do. Get the listing and then say, you do it, because I don't know how, <laughs> okay? And, and we're capable of handling lots of those at, at, um, all over, so, yes? And that's 150 per listing, right? Per listing, yes. We'll also be offering probably the end of September, early October, when I can get a few more people trained, um, that uh, you'll pay for the ad spend up front and then we'll bill you at closing and we'll probably add like an extra $50 for interest. So, so it's like the, it's the purple bricks effect, I guess. So, what's that? 
And if it expires? If it expires, you would still, and that's the purple bricks part. It, I don't know if you guys know, but if, if a FISBO uses uh, purple bricks, they pay at closing. Whether they close or not. Whether they close or not. It's 3500 bucks. They pay up front. And if, they pay up front. They pay up front. Yeah, no, they can delay to closing. But you're, you're on the hook for purple bricks for 3500 bucks, whether you close or not. Yeah, so you can always use that against your FISBOs. People that may want to use purple bricks say, oh, did you know that if you're priced 20% over market value and you don't close, you're on the hook for $3,500 because their sales presentations, they don't talk about that. It's in the fine print. So, yeah, see? I, I, I left you with one good piece of info today. Yes? I have a question. Okay. Okay, I'm a little lost. I don't know if somebody else is. <laughs> Okay, so with this that we just did, that we put right down, whatever. Yep. How we're gonna make the videos? So the videos, you use your iPhone, uh -huh. or if you don't want to appear, you can use something like the service I showed you, or you can just literally you can use PowerPoint and uh -huh. put everything on different uh, slides, and then you can save it as a video, and it'll just do it for you. 